Okay, I wanted to go through another example of determining a Taylor polynomial. And while we're at it, we'll also determine the Taylor series for this function. So let me turn my ink on. And uh, that's what we're going to be looking for. Here's the function we're working with this time, f of x equals 1 over 1 minus x. Uh, it's a rational function, so it's a little bit different than the transcendental functions we've been working with. Uh, we're going to expand our Taylor polynomial about x equals 0 in order to find the Taylor series, expand it about x equals 0. Uh, we actually can also call this a Maclaurin series or Maclaurin polynomial uh, that we're going to come up with here. So the first thing we need to do is come up with some derivatives, and let's go ahead and do that. So let's see, our original function, uh, I'm going to rewrite to make it easier to take its derivative. So we'll bring that 1 minus x up to the top and rewrite it to the negative 1 power. f prime of x then will be negative 1 times 1 minus x to the negative 2 times the derivative of negative x, or 1 minus x, which is negative 1. The negatives cancel, and we get 1 minus x to the negative 2. Okay, so that actually might be easier to evaluate if we put it in the other form, 1 minus, with the 1 minus x squared on the bottom. Now, this form will be the easiest to take the derivative of. Let's go ahead and get f double prime of x. That will be equal to negative 2 times 1 minus x to the negative third power times negative 1. The negatives cancel, but the 2 is still there. So it'll be 2 times 1 minus x. All right, so let's see. This is the negative third power. And this ends up being the third power down here. OK, so now what we end up with, um, taking the third derivative, we need to have, I guess, uh, one more derivative after this. So f triple prime. f triple prime of x is equal to, let's see, negative 3 times 2 is negative 6 times 1 minus x to the negative fourth power times negative 1. Uh, the negative signs cancel and we get 6 times 1 minus x to the negative 4 or 6 over 1 minus x to the fourth power. So now taking the fourth derivative of f, we have the fourth derivative of f at x, equals negative 4 times 6, negative 24, times 1 minus x to the negative fifth power, times the negative 1. The negative signs cancel. Let me bring it down here. And we end up with writing it nicely this time. We don't need to take another derivative right now. We get 24 over 1 minus x to the fifth power. OK, now what we're going to do is evaluate these. I'm going to change color over here, and we're going to get f at 0. We're evaluating them at the point we're centering about. So that's this point right here. So f at 0, when you put 0 into the function, you've got 1 over 1 minus 0. That's 1. Now we're putting it into the derivative, the first derivative. So f prime at 0 is equal to 1 over 1 minus 0 uh, squared. So that's really 1 over 1 squared, or 1. Uh, now we need f double prime at 0. That's this function, 2 over 1 to the third power. So we get 2. Then we go on to f triple prime at 0. That gives us 6. And then the fourth derivative of f at 0, which, as we see, gives us 24. All right, now we're ready to write out the fourth um, degree Taylor polynomial. Move things down a little bit. And the first thing we're going to do is write out 
the formula. So p sub 4 of x equals, I'm going to put the formula, put, putting in the value that we're centering about, so putting in the 0 into the formula for the Taylor polynomial uh, for fourth degree. So f at 0 plus f prime at 0 times x minus 0, so I'll just put x here, plus f double prime at 0 over 2 factorial, which I'll just write 2, times x squared, plus f triple prime at 0 over 3 factorial, which I'll write that for now, times x cubed, and maybe I'll put the factorial in with a 2 as well, plus the fourth derivative of f at 0 over 4 factorial times x to the fourth. Okay, now we're going to plug in the values we just calculated up above for these functions, and we get 1 plus 1x, or x, plus um, 2 over 2 factorial, which I'll put 2 in for that now, plus the third derivative was 6 over 3 factorial, that's a 6 as well, times x cubed, plus the fourth derivative at 0, which is 24 over 4 factorial, which happens to be 24 also, uh, x to the fourth. Notice how each of the factorials is canceled here. And what we end up with, if we move down a little bit, for our polynomial, our fourth degree polynomial here, is 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed plus x to the fourth. Well, that's a pretty nice pattern. Uh, perhaps you can tell me what's going to be next if we were to continue uh, with higher degrees. I think you could tell me, right? We're going to add, if we wanted a fifth degree, we're going to add x to the fourth, or x to the fifth. Then if we wanted to get sixth degree, we'd have plus x to the fifth, plus x to the sixth, and so on. And uh, now what we want to do is just see if we can figure out a Taylor series representation of the function 1 over 1 minus x. And in this case, let's see here, n equals 0 to infinity. And if we can guess at what the form would be, what do you think? Hmm, this would be like x to the 0, x to the 1st, x to the 2nd, x to the 3rd, x to the 4th. Hmm, maybe it's going to be just x to the n as 0 goes to infinity. So we can add up those terms, and sure enough, that's what we have here for the first four terms. And we see that that's going to keep going. So this ends up being the exact value of the Taylor series. Now, the next thing we want to think about is, where is this good? How far out can you really use this? Well, First of all, you might consider that this function, 1 over 1 minus x, is discontinuous at 1. So it doesn't work too far from 0, at least in the direction to the right, if you think about it. Uh, to the left, it actually is, is going to work just fine. But what we need to do here is to figure out the um, places that it converges, and, and you know how far does it work <laughs> out to the left. So what we want to do here is to consider where is this function, for what values of x is this series going to converge? This is an idea called the um, interval of convergence that we're looking for. It's the domain of a function written as a power series. And so what we could do here is to think about what values of x raised to the n here would actually cause the series to converge. In other words, would give us a, a value that would make sense here, not get a f an infinite value, or something that bounces back and forth infinitely, that diverges. And if you think about it, this looks a lot like a geometric series. I hope that you can see that. And if it's a geometric series, the x would have to be a value between what two numbers? Well, I hope you, you'd say here that this Taylor series will converge for x between negative 1 and 1. So in this case, for negative 1 less than x less than 1. Maybe I should say up here for absolute value of x less than 1, since it's a geometric series. Let's see. since it is a 
geometric geo series. With the ratio in this case being x. And in fact, if you think about it, the, the a here is 1, and if x is the ratio, then it would converge to 1, well, a over 1 minus r, and in this case, r is x, and a is 1, so you should get 1 over 1 minus x. So in a sense, this one day makes total sense. It's very consistent with what we'd expect it to be based on what we know of geometric series. Now it turns out that the radius of convergence here, what's called the radius of convergence, is 1. Uh, it's centered at 0, and its, it's interval of convergence, maybe I can move this down here a little bit, interval of convergence of this series is negative 1 comma 1 with parentheses to show it's an open interval. Uh, this is effectively the same thing as the domain of the function when it's written as a power series. We're going to talk a lot more about that in class and in the next couple of examples. So I just wanted to mention it here where it makes pretty good sense. and It's a nice example to sort of introduce this concept. Okay, that should be good for this example.